Last month when YouTube announced they're going to remove the dislike count from all videos across its entire platform, I thought it was a pretty bad idea. So I went ahead and wrote a program that would pull my dislike data, put it in a comment, and post that comment under that particular video. If you're subscribed to the channel, you've already seen that video. If you aren't, then consider subscribing. I made a video going over how that code works and whatnot, a few bugs, a few issues, and a few things that I didn't have time to do since I just through this together in a single day. But obviously I want this to actually become something that other people can use as well as I can consistently use. So in this video, I, well, I've already done it. I have fixed all those bugs, completed all the issues that I can for now, gone through a few of the pull requests and completed this program as far as this video is concerned. There's always room for improvement, always room to do more. But I also have an alternate idea that may work a little bit better. It just requires more work from the viewers of any particular creator, but it would be easier for the creator to use the alternative, which if I can get done over the next month, it's a little bit more involved. Plus I have other obligations to do prior to this. If I can get it done over the next month, then you'll see that video and that program be available in January of 2022. But for now, let's get this program that I created to put the dislike count back on my channel, actually operational and address some of the concerns that y'all had. So obviously the very first thing that I need to address is what I mentioned previously. And that is the fact that it's overriding not only the automated comment, but every other comment made by me. And that is an error on my part, not a bug in the code because that has everything to do with my search terms. So this is how that comment that it wants to update is located if it already exists. And if I just put very simple search terms, then it may go through all of the comments that may match those search terms. Instead, I had to make sure that the search terms are rather specific for the automated comment. So it would only work on the automated comment and only that particular automated comment when it's done by me. So that is fixed, but it will change from person to person if you change the original text. And the next issue is this one right here is another one that I did not find. It is for a video with zero likes and dislikes. So the script will give a zero division error need to write a test case for that. So I didn't find because as I mentioned, I didn't write any tests for this little program, but also I didn't have any videos with zero likes and zero dislikes because I guess there are people that love me and hate me. So I didn't run into this problem when actually running the code. And that was actually fixed in a pull request right here. So previously the code looked like this. Let me move this over a little bit so you can better see it. In order to get the ratio, we would do likes divided by the total amount of likes plus dislikes, and then multiply it by 100 to get our percentage. However, if this right here equaled zero, well, zero division error, you can't divide by zero, that's okay. So that is where the if statement comes in handy. So if likes and dislikes equal zero, then make the ratio zero. Otherwise, do the math that I implemented before. I am happy with this solution there. I'm sure there are other ways to go about it that may be different or some people may think better, but this works. So now we have fixed the two main bugs, if you will, where it would overwrite comments that was never intended to be overwritten and the actual bug where you would be met with an error if the likes or disliked, dislikes equaled zero. But there's also another issue. I only ran this on five videos at a time. And that is because as you can see down here, the results per page is only five. That is the default. However, we can change that default, override it by putting in the max results and we can put in 50 right here. As you can see, we have max results 50, hit enter. And now the results per page are 50. However, the total results are 243. Now you'd say, okay, we'll just make this something more than 243, so 250. However, the Maximum results per page is still 50. So it doesn't matter if we put in 250 or a thousand or a million, we can only have 50. So let's just keep it at that. The way that we get to the rest. So the remaining 193 results, which the results are videos. I've uploaded 243 videos that this is pulling in. The way to do that is by the next page token right here. And this is how I implemented that. So I put the entire for loop in a while loop. So while we have videos 
it does all of this for each individual video and that is exactly what the program does it pulls the dislikes and likes and all of this data right here it puts it all into a comment and then it creates a new comment or edits a comment if that comment already exists however once it's done with those 50 it hops out of the for loop that's the end of the for loop right here and it tries if there's a next page token then implement that next page token and get the next 50 results again this could be 50 i should just change that here yep there we go else break so it'll continually go through here as long as there is a next page token which there will be a next page token as long as there is a next page meaning results on the next page so it should run through every single video and make a comment with all of the data on every single video and update that video or that comment every single day which brings us to the next part the cron job which is just like a little script that runs this program every single day which i actually haven't done just yet but i'll get around to it i don't know if i'm going to do it this video though kind of kind of feeling a little bit lazy today i just kind of want to finish the video <laughs> i mean I'll tell you how it is. That's just that that's just how I am. Whatever. But here's a look at that code running. Because I actually ran it yesterday. Actually, I can run it today. Let me just run it right now so we can see how it goes because I ran into an issue yesterday, which doesn't make really any sense. All right, but now we are on a brand new day. We have entirely reset quota because it resets every single day. I have 10,000, and I'm actually not even sure what one particular video, how many, how, how much of the quota it takes up, but we're gonna see what we can do today. All right, the moment of truth, let's uh, let's see if this works. This is gonna take a while. So just a quick look while that is doing each and every individual video and tell you the quota runs out or the code breaks. As you can see, I ran this yesterday. So this is as far as it got, the my process of completing a software engineering task and it was last updated on December 7th, just like every single other comment in here because again it did all of this yesterday so as long as it gets to at least this point we should see new comments but also when we come to this comment it should be slightly updated in terms of the values as well as last updated on december 8th that's how it should work so it looks like we may have hit the same wall as last time because this is the same error that i got it had to do with the video ID as if there was no new video ID to work with. So I haven't done too much research on this, but if we come over here and we refresh, we didn't get any new videos, but as you can see, it was updated today, just now. So if any of you have any idea as to why it is only doing 109 videos or if it's stopping at whenever I uploaded this video, maybe it's a date thing. I'm not sure maybe they ch So where are we at? I uploaded this video. Can I see when I uploaded this video? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm an idiot. March 8th, 2019. So did something happen just before March 8th where it would mess up the API and retrieving the video ID? Or is there another issue? If anyone knows, I'd appreciate it. Oh, and if anyone wants to get a $20 credit, you know, go to linode.com slash night. <laughs> but that's how it works. And it'll also be interesting to see once I upload another video, if it'll stay at 109, meaning it will not update this comment, but it will update this comment, or if it'll update 110 videos, you know, the current 109 plus the new one. And that would tell me that there is an issue with the YouTube API and gathering the video ID prior to what date was that? March 8th, 2018, 19? I already forgot. But prior to that video, which will be kind of interesting. But moving on from that. So it does the job. I just need to automate it, which whatever. Okay, I'll automate it. I did the next page token. I did the zero div error. I did the search terms. The PRs improve readability and testability of the code. Joey actually did a lot, a lot of good stuff. My only gripe with it, and I, I say that loosely, I'll read my comment right here. A lot of this is very helpful. I haven't gone through all of it, but I will. The only issue is I see with it, geez, can I form a sentence? The only issue I see with it is that it's quite a bit different from the YouTube data API documentation code, which may be better, but it could cause some trouble in the future for others trying to understand the code 
And I just said, let me think, think on this a bit longer. And he said, good point. I can isolate some of the YouTube boilerplate code better and remove some of my changes to that specific part later. Some of this is good. I'll have to see some of the changes. I haven't done that just yet, but all of that is on my to-do list. And this is style improvements, Pythonic code as well. That is like the main change. So converted camel case to snake case, since that's the recommended naming convention for Python. Update message body content to be easier to edit. I believe the previous pull request does this as well. And then the add time to date. So there are two issues with this. One is I'm not sure that's necessary if I update it once a day doesn't necessarily matter when it's updated. The only time this would come in handy is if I implemented something for new uploads. So those new uploads would get updated every five minutes for the first couple hours and then every hour for the next 24 hours or something like that. So you could see an active climb in views to dislikes instead of waiting an entire day on a new upload, which would be more helpful. But if I do it once a day on all my other videos, I don't think it matters that much because all my other videos aren't gonna change so drastically. So it doesn't matter if it was done at 8 a.m. Eastern time or 8 p.m. Eastern time. You see what I mean? Let me know if you agree or if you have any other thoughts or concerns on that. But I think what I say makes a little bit of sense. And also this is another problem with the formatting of the time is that it creates a timestamp. And I don't wanna create a timestamp, I wanna create a time. And that's a timestamp for the video. So if you click on that, it'll take you to, is this hours, this minutes, this seconds? It'll take you to 35 minutes into the video, which the vast majority of my videos, it'll just take you right to the end and you'll skip it and you won't watch it and then I'll be sad. So <laughs> I don't wanna do that. So I think that's about it. The only other issue is the fact that I can't pin the comments. However, I do have a potential solution to this. That is at least for future videos. So every single time I upload a video, I go through getting the thumbnail, doing the description, doing the keyword search, putting in any, any links to videos and doing the end screen and monetization and stuff like that. Part of my process could also be adding a comment that fits the same boilerplate as the comment that you see here, the, the automated comment, and then pin that comment. So I pin that comment and wait about 10, 20, 30 minutes to update that comment. But as it is pinned, I will depend on y'all to thumbs up the comment. So that way when it gets updated, it gets unpinned, but it has so many thumbs up from y'all that it'll stay at the top of the comment section. And that's really the only solution that I see working in this situation. Y'all suggested a few things and that is put the dislike count in the description or put the dislike count in the title the issue with that is that it re-indexes the video every single time you edit the title in the description and i'm not sure how that works with seo and and whatnot but also i'm a bit more nervous about changing the title for all of my videos or editing the description for every single one of my videos opposed as opposed to just you know messing with a comment because it's a little bit easier that way and as far as the program is concerned right now, that's about it. There are two other things that I would like to address that are in the overall realm of this. And the first one, I know a lot of y'all probably already commented this, has to do with the extension return dislike count or something like that. It is a rather popular extension. And I don't say what I'm about to say to, you know, I, I love my fellow developer. They were pretty quick in putting this out. I think they put it out a couple days after I put this program out. But it's an extension that returns a dislike count for now. If you have seen my community post the same day I uploaded this video, and that is the fact that YouTube is removing your ability to get dislike data via the YouTube data API. Now, there's a few caveats here. My program will still work because I am giving authorization to my API to get my dislike data. But if I were to try to get any other channels dislike data, I can't do it without their authorization. And that is the problem with this extension. And they even acknowledge that in their own GitHub repo, the fact that the dislike field on the YouTube API will be removed on December 13th. So the way this extension will work after December 13th is our backend will switch to using a combination of scraped dislike stats, estimates extrapolated from extension user data and estimates based on view like ratios. So basically every video dislike data that has been scraped prior to December 13th will be stored. And then they will basically take that information and try to 
again, extrapolate, basically do a little bit of math here and there and, and basically guesstimate the like to dislike ratio. It may be fairly accurate, but it's not going to be exact. And sometimes it may not even be accurate. We have yet to see that. I hope they can find a way around this. Obviously, this is completely out of their control. This has everything to do with YouTube and their attempt to remove the dislike count from their entire platform. But I just wanted to let you know that if you do use this particular extension, because I know there are a lot of people say, give up on your program, there's already an extension for it. It's not going to work exactly the way you think it's working. And then the other thing I want to talk about is the fact that YouTube is, they're not really covering their tracks too well. So you know how they said they removed the dislike count for the well-being of creators? Well, as a creator, I never go to the actual video to view my dislike count or to view comments or anything. I use YouTube Studio and this right here is YouTube Studio. It actually takes you to the dashboard, but that has a lot of different analytics that are beyond the scope of what we're talking about right now. But this is where I can come to my comments. This is every comment left on my channel for any particular video, as you can see. You can also go to monetization, any copyright claims you have, analytics, playlists, and content. This is one of the main tabs. And as you see, you can view all of your videos here the public, monetization, all this other information, which you may have already seen, likes and dislikes. This is literally where I check as a creator, the like to dislike ratio on a given video. So before they actually implemented the removal of the dislike count, I figured that along with it, they were gonna remove it from here as well because there's a way to drill into the analytics on a video and pull up the dislike count. And the whole point in that would be to not unintentionally view your like to dislike count and the only way you could view it is if you intentionally drilled in and found that information so if they were actually worried about the well-being of creators don't you think they would remove it from the main place for which creators look at that information and even if they're not searching for the information they can easily unintentionally view it I mean, we all knew that YouTube wasn't removing the dislike count for the well-being of creators. They did it because, well, I, th I think we all have a decent idea of why they did it. But since they decided to sell it as they're doing this for the well-being of creators, you'd think they'd try a little bit harder to convince us of that angle. But uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I just thought that was a funny, a funny thing, and I wanted to mention it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you want more content like this. I have a lot more coding projects on the horizon. And if you aren't subscribed already, Hit the bell so you're notified when I do upload. I don't upload that often, so you're not going to get spammed by my uploads. And um, I think that's all I have to say on this matter. Don't forget to the support the sponsor of this video, LG Graham. The link will be in the top of the description. If you want to check out the specs, check out the other versions of the new LG Graham. It's kind of funny because I actually received an LG Graham last year. And then earlier this year, I got an Intel Evo Series laptop. And then now I get the Intel Evo Series LG Graham. It's kind of funny how that works out, but um, <laughs> I just figured I'd mention that. Hope you all have a good day, good week. I'll see you on the next video.